So that's for the next 90 minutes. It may be slightly offensive to some of you. OK, Life Elsewhere is going to go on the air right now, I hope. Seattle's best rock! John, what do you do? My name is John Conti. I'm the words road. He sings. He sings. That's what he means. He sings. <laughs> yeah. And Jerry, what do you do? I'm Jerry, and I play guitar. And you're the newest guitar. member of the band. Two weeks ago. Two yes. weeks ago. Then we have Duff. I also play guitar. Duff plays guitar. Then we have Greg. Drums. And Greg plays the drums. And Todd on the end. Uh, I play the bass. I think. <laughs> <laughs> also tonight we have with us. Brian Fox. Brian Fox, Fox, and I try to manage this this game. This it's motley crew. This motley crew. <laughs> is that a difficult task, Brian? You seem to have, you seem to have a worried look on your face the whole time, is it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's worried if he's going to get home safely. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it good, Brian. <laughs> no, it's it's great. I enjoy it, and it's it's generally pretty easy, but I don't. You know, there's difficulties. Are you are you Really like a like a, a an all encompassing father confessor and and a, 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 a granddaddy no, and, and no. whatever to the band. I'm just I'm Malcolm. just kind of a friend that, that supplies a, an outside of object semi objective opinion. I mean it's hard because I you know this is this is the kind of music I like and the way they play is the way I like it best. But still. You know, I just supply an outside objective view, and that's all. I don't really have any effect on what the band looks like, or what the band sounds like, or anything like that. I just say, hey, that's really good. That's the shit. How long has the living been together? How long have you been together as a band? Since August. Of, this, of last year? 81? Yes. 81. And Jerry just joined the band when? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. What, were you in a band in... in where, where did you come from? British Columbia? Yeah, Vancouver. I was playing in the Deans. I've been down here for eight months now, and I was playing in the Deans for about six of those months. And then our bass player went to New York, and we were stuck. So now I'm in a better band. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. Yeah. Now I, I this is this is really important to me. I a number of months ago, Brian brought me a tape, which was recorded live at Rex, and I think he came to came to see me with with Duff. Uh, not with Duff, with John, sorry, got to get that right. Uh, and I said to you, give me some information about the band. And you said, there's nothing to say, the guys don't want to say anything about themselves. Now we're all together, tell me something about yourselves. That's, that's, that's the first thing. When I had a tape, I played it on the air, I had nothing to say about you. So I'm sure people want to know, I know people have asked me, tell me something about this band. Is there anything you want to say about yourselves before we get into asking like formal questions? Want to say, say anything about yourselves? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> a shy band, folks. <laughs> well, we're a real young band and we're enthusiastic, we're powerful. We don't mess around. We are serious about our job and we don't, we're not wimpy. And that is the main drag. It's not a job, it's an adventure. Yes, that's right. I a five-year mission. You know what I mean? Hey. The one, the one thing to get clear about the living right. is that we're honest and straightforward. Who writes all the songs? Do you all write together, or is it one, one of you, two of you? What? It's um, well, it's Duff sometimes by himself, sometimes with me, sometimes it's John and me, and so it's a, it's a mixture of all of you. Yeah, right? we all give in our share. I mean. I mean, no one just writes a song without somebody putting in something else. We all give our own parts. We're all five individuals with with a lot of talent, and we give everybody strength. And very modest as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm the only modest one of the band. <laughs> no, I like I like all kinds of music. Um, your kind of music, I, I particularly like it. Well, the way you do it, anyway. If if, but just for the sake of people listening in, would you like to see yourselves classified in some kind of set category as no, regards no, your music? No, no, thanks. I mean, I think probably the average listener listening in might still put you in the category of, in quotes, punk music. Do you see yourselves like that, or do you see yourselves no. just as a, as not just, but I mean as a, 
as a rock and roll band that plays good, fun dance music. Or, or yeah. I say the word that rock and roll. Totally different. We play. We're a mixture of heavy metal, punk, everything you know, punk, funk, whatever you know. It's the fun stuff. I think I think calling it punk would be just restricting it too much yeah. because people have a real narrow idea of what punk is. The the elements it does have that are common with punk are the energy, um, the power, you know, possibly the speed on a lot of songs. But other than that, I don't really see it having that much in common with punk. Since, since you formed last last August, did you say? Yeah. Have you have you ever met, I, I I haven't yet had the chance to get and see you. I, I try to get to see as many bands as possible, but I haven't seen you guys yet. Have you had that many gigs? Has there, have there been many that many places you've played yet? Or it's it's really been on and off. It's you know some months maybe four or five gigs, and then for a couple months it's maybe one or two. I mean it's we'll it's that. real flexible. What about the future for, for you as regards playing in Seattle? Is that, is that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Desus 400? Yeah, so say that re repeat it loudly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Desus 400. Thursday being tonight, of course. You'll be, this is, this is pre-recorded, everybody. Right, so. yeah, tonight yeah. we'll be playing. Yeah, we'll be playing with the fast on the air. At the Fastbacks. Yeah. And we're playing with DOA on the 19th. Where's that at? That's at... Uh, Monroe's Dance Palace on Elliott and West Dillon. Elliott. Mm -hmm. West that's, Elliott. A, that's a new place to me. New place, brand new. It's right down there across from um, Derrigold and Baskin Robbins, right there on Elliott Avenue. Oh. Hmm. So it's in the city. What do you, you, we just discussed about not being classified in, into any set name or, or style or whatever <coughs> what do you actually think yourselves as, as the band as the living what do you think makes yourselves different to other bands catchy songs age all right how old are you then how, what's, what's the average age of the band 19. do you think that's young or old i mean yeah still, that's definitely young for, for a band in seattle is that a young is that a young age for a band that plays like we do that's young yeah yeah, Intelli exactly. Isn't it amazing, you know, when your voice is slowed down like that, like the tape was running at? Uh, did you notice it was running a little, little bit slow there? Thank you very much for the people that called up and told me and alerted my attention to that fact. I had realised I don't really talk like that. Uh, that was The Living. You've been listening to a little bit of an interview with The Living. I'm going to hear some more of, from them later on. I found it rather interesting. I hope you did. You listen to KREB 107.7 FM in Seattle. Be playing at Desi's 400 tonight, tomorrow night and Saturday night. In fact, they're not going to be playing there. They did play there, I believe, on Tuesday night, and uh, Des didn't seem to like them very much. Oh well, this is Soft Cell. Previously, previously this week, with The Living, and I thought it would be a good idea to hear some more of it right now, so why don't we just do that? And uh, this is uh, some of it, I hope, if we, if we actually get to it. Yes. You know, we're, we're, we're serious about what we're talking about, but then again, we're kind of making fun of it. You know, we're not so serious that, you know, we're 
I mean, you're not. You don't come across to me as being like some. I, I won't name any bands, particularly in Seattle, uh, just for the sake of bad feelings or whatever. But you don't seem to be so angry. You don't seem angry about everything and anything. Although I'm sure that you share some views that I have as well. That things sure. aren't quite right. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? Well, living in America, it's so easy. Anywhere else in the world, they can be angry, but in America, we got it easy. Yeah, easier than anywhere and then people say oh we got it so hard but they're they're really kidding themselves I mean they have to go out and see the world before you know it's that hard because getting a job isn't that hard if you want it bad enough you know if you want something bad enough you go and get it you know? do, do all you I, guys we, we sorry go ahead John I think what that tune says basically is that we're, we're making a somewhat of a political statement. We want the crowd to have a good time, but we also want them to realize that, yeah, this sort of thing is going on. People are shooting people in the streets. I read in the paper every day about 11 and 12 year olds shooting some friend of theirs. And, you know, so live by the gun is like, it's it's a political statement, but you got to take it somewhat seriously. But you also got to relax and just sort of think, okay, we want to change it this way. Let's not do it hardcore. Let's do it in time. Do you think that people, when they're listening to your to your music, when they go to see a show, or, they, or in the or like on this program, they listen to the tape, or in the future, if you have a record out, which I presume you will be doing, we'll talk about that later on. Do you think that people actually pick up on listening to the lyrics? Do you think that people are conscious of what you're saying? Yeah. Some, some points, the choruses and stuff. For example, yeah. Live by the Gun, exactly. that's a long chorus. And, uh, there's, there's points that I'm sure pe I, I've heard people repeating and singing along with us. But a lot of the words people don't listen to, you know, they just kind of listen to the whole. Oh, there's been a lot, a lot of in the last few years, particularly in the so-called punk movement. There's been, a, there's been, and I don't want to really harp on this punk thing too long, but there's been so much said about protest and, and anger and all the rest of it. What, what are your feelings about? I mean, you're, you're. We're just talking about live by the gun, but what do you feel about all that other, other stuff? Do, do you have any? You just said, Todd, about how, how easy it is to live in America, and if you want to get a yeah. job, you can work. Do all you guys work? Or are you going to school or, or? I mean, well, well, I just got out of high school Friday. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> and uh, he, um, Greg, just got out of college and uh, and stuff like that. I don't know. Not People a... look at punk as California. California punks, they, they're um, LA. very rich, most of them, and they trash stuff and everything. And that's... You know, it gives punk a bad name, and that's, you know, that's not good for anybody. It's just music, really. And a lot of people don't listen for the lyrics, they listen for the music only. But uh, more the intellectual people do listen to the, for the lyrics and get what the meaning of the song, you know, feeling, you know, it gets right here, hits right in the heart. and. You know, you just go, whoa, that's bad. Yeah, you know, that's cool. <laughs> I think a lot of punk bands, tr they're basically, especially when they try to be political, I think they're talking about a lot of things they don't really know that much about. True. It's just, it's part of the shtick, you know. Oh, okay, we're going to come out, we're going to play this really hard music, and we're going to rant and rave, and, and I think it's sort of contrived, whereas I think the living... When they have a message, it's usually something they know a little bit about, like Live by the Gun, more directly is about the draft. And I think, you know, the bands all around 19, I'm sure they can relate to that. It's something they know about. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I've decided. I've just got to see that band live sometime or other. Not at Desi's 400, obviously. Let's live by the gun, by the living, and some more of them later on. Of the living. Uh, I don't know, I forget what I asked him. Let's find out what I asked him. It's on tape. Why don't I let them speak for themselves, eh? Do you think the scene, in quotes, is uh, a lot different down here in Seattle in the northwest of the United States to, to, to Canada? Speaking politically wise? If you want, yeah. Um, in Vancouver and in Seattle, everybody's just as ignorant. They don't they don't know what they're talking about. And nobody really knows what they're talking about. They'll say something, but they don't really know. It's you gotta stupid. mean it. You gotta mean it yeah. when you say it. And people just come off as stupid to me seeing them say something that they don't know anything about. What about the crowds that come to see you? I, I, I presume because of your age, you find it more difficult to play in, a, in, a, in an all-ages place, in an all-ages venue, rather than a... a, a no, it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is the other way around, around. isn't it? Yeah, the other you, way around. It's yeah. easy to play in an all-ages place. Uh, every crowd that we've played for, at least from my eyes, I don't know about the rest of the guys, has been a little bit different. It's really rather hard to play in a, in a uh, bar situation. Uh, the hard. crowd's a little bit older. They expect something, something that's more listenable. Mild. Right. Good word. Yeah. But <laughs> it seems like we're an all ages band. I think the the crowd that follows us at the moment is probably do you 18 think, or 19. Do you have a crowd that, that always comes to your your shows? Basically with the bands we play with a lot come, we know a lot of bands, we yeah. played with a lot of bands so they they bring a following. We we bring people in and they're willing to you know they're willing to listen to us and give us a chance but a lot of times when we play in the nightclubs and stuff like that they want to dance but they won't, if they don't know the music, they won't give it a chance. No. Think about Seattle as as a or the, the Northwest as a place. Jerry just made up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we're well, leaving as soon as possible. I'll tell you. You are. Well, it's not. It's not. I mean, it's not this town. It's the the people in mind. They they're just uh, they're really afraid of anything powerful. They're afraid of power. They're afraid of. St they're um, afraid of something different. Yeah, right. There's no competition. They just don't, uh, anything that um, is not preppy, and I mean that preppy, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they're, okay, they want college rock right now, and that's what they, they're into. And, I mean, anything young, anything exciting, and too powerful and too ex expressive. I, I noticed, and you, you, you probably noticed this maybe even more astutely than I do because you're much younger than I am, but you probably notice that kids of your age are either, as you said, either very conservative and preppy or, in a very small element, are rebelling, I guess, that's the only way I can put it. Is, am, am I right in that observation? Well, or, they think they're, re they're rebelling, yeah. but they're really, they're not, I mean, the only bands that they go to see are the bands in their own clique, you know. That's group, yeah, clique know, groups. <laughs> they're not rebelling against anything. They're conforming just like everybody else. You know, they're saying, oh, preppies stink because they conform. And shit, they're, they conform just like everybody else. Well, we just talked about Seattle, and Jerry said, gave a thumbs down sign about Seattle. Are you thinking seriously about moving out of Seattle? Is that, is that your, is that your plans? Yeah, because um, this town is, Seattle is really backwards in a lot of ways. I think the main reason is, as far as affecting this band is the fact that in most other large metropolitan areas, and this is barely a metropolitan area, the schools, you know, the musical scene seems to happen out of the school and the college students tend to be a little more open to new ideas. Whereas in Seattle, it seems like the college students are supporting the MOR attitude that's all over Seattle. It's like they're the ones that are afraid of anything new. Whereas if you go to some place like Los Angeles or San Francisco or New York or Chicago or anything like that, 
the new move, new music movements start with schools and then spread through the city. So where where are you guys planning to go to? Is that is that everywhere not, else? It's not definite. I think Texas. one thing that Brian just <laughs> one thing that Brian didn't say just then was the fact that supposedly what it takes like two years to get to New York. What's happening in England, and then it takes three years to get to L.A., and it must take about five <laughs> to seven years to get to <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> yeah, so, like, that's where Seattle is. It's We're not really behind, we're just not with it. Yeah. You know? And, of course, by the time it gets here, it's, it's bastardized <laughs> anyway, because it gets mutated going to New York and mutated going to L.A., and by the time it gets here, it's so watered down and so plastic that it's hard to take it seriously. The band will probably not ever be top here in Seattle, but the band will probably be able to make it somewhere else. You don't see yourselves uh, watering down your ide ideals or ideas at all. You, you, no chance. Not to make up, not to make some money. Uh, a lot of people, when they they start to make some money uh, and they get a deal with a record company. Um, the record company then dictates to them what they should have to do to sell more products. If you I want money, I'll just go get a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of experience with it. We were talking about records. What about record deals or record contracts or, or whatever? Brian, you can probably answer this. There's possibilities. <laughs> is there any, is there there's any things in the works, and you know, there's no point in mentioning now because nothing's happened yet. But there's definitely, you know, some buzzing going on, and we're optimistic. Cause, you would, know, would you want to do like some of the other bands have done in this town? In fact, nearly every other band I've I've spoken to has eventually put out their own record. Do Do you want to do that, or or do, would you like to? Maybe move move one jump ahead of that, and, and oh, record would be nice, but only as a ticket out out of Seattle. You so, it seems to me that's what you're saying is that Seattle is more of a hindrance to you than than yeah yeah yeah. But wouldn't it be true though if you went to say Los Angeles or San Francisco even that there's going to be another half a dozen, if not more, livings? No, no. There's no. no, I don't, I don't see a, any other band as being like us and having the same ideals and really is, I mean, because we know what we're talking about, I, attitudes, yeah. yeah, a lot of the other bands just, you know, oh yeah, we'll go play and then we'll go take drugs afterwards and, you know, oh, we'll have great fun, you know, and kill everybody, fight, you know, and all this stuff, <laughs> we're just, you know, I think, you know, we can, we're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we dry up. There's a little bit, there's a, you know, it just comes down to there's a little bit of everything for everybody in this band. And we're not going to kill ourselves. We don't really give a fuck about uh, a lot of the rock ideals. We want to make our own, and, you know, we want to sort of do our own thing. Without looking to stuck to everybody up. else did. And you know what? I bet you we drink more beer than any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, drink, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs>
that song was just for you. That's the living there. You just heard a little bit more of the interview we did with them earlier this week. Some more from the living a little later on. Uh, now, some about criticism, and uh, this is the kind of thing they answered. As of yet, we haven't gotten much poor criticism. We've gotten some constructive criticism. Uh, we've also sort of got dogged by some promoters and stuff in town, which is Namely, exactly what you get now. Uh, it's been fucking hard. Hair. Because at, at some points, like back in March, the band was existing only on rehearsing. We you weren't playing anywhere. No, place. we weren't playing for about two months from February to March. Well, it, sound, it sounds like that's changing because if, if a promoter came to you, and we won't use any names, but if, if a promoter came to we can do, I guess, but if a prom promoter came to you and said they wanted you to play uh, at, uh, at a show next uh, next Saturday night uh, supporting No Cheese, please, would you would you do it? Or, or, or uh, I, I'm just using that band as, yeah. an, as an example. I, 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 but I get the feeling from the look on your faces that it wouldn't be quite the, the, the band that you would particularly want to choose to support. But would that matter? Would you still go along and do it? You'd yeah, definitely. Yeah, we would. Because I have to play. We yeah. They, no. do a, they do a show with the Dianette set, and that's, you know, pretty diverse coupling. And uh, they did pretty well with the crowd there. But unfortunately, the, the people that, that booked them at the club weren't interested in, in having them back just because they said, well, look, you know, they didn't do that well. But in the circumstances, they did quite well. This seems to me to be a, a, a just getting back to the Seattle thing. Because whilst you're in Seattle, and it, right now it doesn't seem like you're you're going to be moving out of Seattle next week. Or <laughs> <laughs> whilst you are here, you're going to try and make the best of it. Is it is it really difficult for a for a young band like yourselves to actually get gigs? Are you, we we talked about earlier on about playing in the bar situation. It doesn't seem to be the most favourable situation for you. So what about other other places? There, there seems to be like a... It's it's really tough. I mean, there's been a lot of bands, hard rock and punk bands that have trashed the, uh, the all-ages halls, and it makes it tough for, you know, promoters to get a show going because they can't find a hall. You know, we'd love to play all-ages shows. We'd love to play any sort of show, but I mean, it's just, you know, it comes and goes. What about the people living, you know, if you're in the club, there's no way you're not going to be aware of the band, and I think a lot of people just want to go there and just they want to have background, background music, yeah. and that's where a lot, of, a lot of bands that run the club circuit around here, you know, they're turned down nice and low, and you can, everything's, I mean, their, their originals might as well be covers, they're so watered down. You can eat nachos too. You can eat nachos too. Nacho rock. <laughs> <laughs> if, not, nacho if, rock. <laughs> if it happened that, say, a commercial radio station in this town suddenly did an about face and started taking notice of what was going on in the city, which, from my opinion, not one of the commercial radio stations does, which is, uh, which is a great pity. Um, would you be open to, or would, would let me put it like this? Would you would you want to do something which would be f fitting into a, a, a commercial radio station format? Um, they already do. There's at least there's five or ten tunes that we already do that conform to commercial music. I think I mean in a way, just your radio station. Well, it's, not it's, it's not commercial. Well, the, yeah, but it's not commercial. But in a sense, it, I mean, it's you know, we're yeah, being able to be around. interviewed tonight. You know, I mean, there's a couple tunes I would say right off the hand that would easily go over KSW and, and yeah, I KCW. I agree with that. I think it's it's, it's really rather odd that that uh, a radio station like KISW, which plays a supposedly heavy metal, is totally ignored. Um, the kind of music that you guys play. And here they have it, sitting in their own backyard, yet they're still shoving up ACDC and the rest of that and stuff. It's like that we, and Kiss. We wear different clothes than they do. We, do you think that's the important, important part of it? Do you think that, I mean, are you, are you conscious well, of that? Well, it seems to be to them, yeah. you know. 
you know, we we look different. We might speak a little different. You know, we don't smoke pot either. So that's that is, let's say, ninety five percent of the reason we're not on there. No Ted Nugent on guitar. You know, no ten minute guitar solos. Is it actually? <laughs> Five to ten second solos. <laughs> we don't put rocks and I mean uh, socks in our pants. Either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't tell me you don't need to, right? <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> Nick, I eat your heart out. It's in my socks. Okay. If they slow down all their songs, you know, they probably could pick up real heavy on a heavy metal audience. But the minute you speed it up, they just go, "That's punk rock." It's the same thing maybe as the heavy metal riff. You, know, you can take a heavy metal riff and maybe a punk riff. And if you play the, the punk riff slower, it sounds like heavy metal. Yeah. And that's the, the fine line for you it. You know, like I went to a party and I, was, I put on some tunes and everyone was listening going, Yeah, this is great. Who is this? And you told them and they go, Get it off! This, yeah. Just get it off! <laughs> and so I lied to them one time and said this is the Stones' new album. And they thought it was, and they listened to it all night long, and then they started asking me different questions, going, who is this band? i tell them another band they'd like, and, you know, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, you know. And it was, it was the Clash, it was just the Clash, I mean, the Clash is very nice, you know, pretty, they're nice to me and everything, and, you know. And if I would have put on the, pa the pistols, it would have just rocked them. And a lot of times, they'd, they'd sit there and they hate it. And they, their foot was still moving. Yeah. Their foot was still moving. And I was going, you have to like it. Look at your foot. You know, they looked down there at their foot and they go, it's moving. They started hitting and stuff. They couldn't stop that. To you too. No thanks there by the living. A little bit more from them uh, before we end the show tonight. What about China Blue Vision by Hylas and Gaza? Was it was Jerry. Yeah. Was it, it, how seriously, guys? How, how long do you give yourselves? Do, do, do you as long as it takes? As long as it yeah. takes. I mean, you, you're young. You've got plenty of time on your side. As long as it takes. Except I know I'm not gonna. If I turn 30, I don't think I'm going to try as hard as I am now. It's just not worth it when you're that old. All right, I don't wanna, you're out. I you're don't, out. I don't want to be. I don't want to be uh, 35 and trying to fucking make it. I mean, that's like the enemy. Well, what if we're you know? 35? Hey, I'm 35. Fuck, I'm really not going to have as much hair as I do now. You know, I mean, I'd rather have somebody who's Where's got a at? full head of hair. <laughs> You know, it's oh. like Bon Scott, you know, Bon Scott, he was going bald at the end, 
and all of a sudden he kicks over dead. I don't think he was planning to kick over dead, but sure you know, he, he just did. <laughs> he had it written on his calendar, didn't you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying tomorrow. Why not? What, the, what I was trying to get at is, is, is pertains to being in Seattle and moving out of Seattle and, and making it in the way that you want to do it. Do you give yourselves an actual set time? I, I wasn't talking about as far ahead as being 30 or 35 or... I think by August we'll be on the road. We're working to get a van right now. And there's some talk about Texas and the West Coast. Mm. Yeah. Canada. 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 Across Canada. Where the beer is strong. I want to thank everybody very much for being here. Thanks we do want to thank you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to ask you, where did you get your boots? <laughs> Seattle! 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 K-R-A-B! Seattle's best rock! Eat your heart out.